raucous crowd at the Big Ten Tournament. Drink in the scene. This should be a fun one as the Iowa Hawkeyes control the ball first. The top scoring team in the country and they waste no time getting on the board. Kate Martin for three. We have seen teams come into this tournament today that have lost that are higher seeds because they have not played on this floor yet. There's an advantage to having a game under your belt. Iowa wastes no time getting on the board. Kate Martin, the first one to score. Again, remember, these are two very high-scoring teams. 84 points a game is what Penn State averages. 92 points is what Iowa averages. Marshall. Shot clock winding down, a near steal for Marshall. Rusu's three goes offline. Iowa doing a nice job clogging up the interior. There wasn't a ton of room to move inside the three-point line. Martin just missed the day for Iowa, but Marshall with the rebound. Steps in the paint. McKenna Marisa all over her. Martin gets another rebound for Iowa. Sydney a falter left alone. She wrote on the scouting report in big letters, do not pass ball to other team. Mike Hall, this game is very simple. <laughs> Make more points than the opponent and, and don't pass the ball to the other team. And you're in a pretty good spot if you execute. One of my favorite things about Caitlin is her ability to talk about her teammates post game. I mean, this is not a selfish person. She loves setting up Gabby Marshall for a three, finding Hannah Stelke in the post. Caitlin Clark has handled this rise to start him about as well as you could ask for somebody to. This is a home game for her. She grew up in Roseville, Minnesota. That is 14 miles northwest from here. She told us she's got lots of family in attendance this week. And what's important for her and her team is they're a bubble team, Megan. I mean, they need to get a win like this would go from being the first team out. A defensive star for Penn State. She gets the basket, but it won't count. Caitlin Clark yet to shoot the ball. The feed to Stelke and the easy two. Penn State is coming over to try to double Hannah Stelke. She knows it's coming, and how do you approach it? Penn State desperate to get on the board, missing their first six shots of the game. Such a difference from yesterday. In their first game of the Big Ten tournament, they hit eight of their first ten from the floor. Finally, Leilani Kapanis is on the board. Big three for Penn State. Iowa's trying to pack the paint right now. There's not a lot of room to move. If Penn State can hit some threes, that would be big. Clark misses her first shot. That's actually her first touch of the game. Leilani Kapanis is guarding Caitlin Clark and not allowing her to have a touch at all. Once the ball comes out of Clark's hands, Leilani Kapanis is hard denying. Ashley Owusu on the drive. That's your leading scorer for the Lady Lions. Didn't join the team until mid-January, battling a health issue. Immediate answer by Iowa, and it's Sydney Falter again. Sydney Falter at the line. Got the start today. I mentioned because Molly Davis injured, but it is not likely we will see her at all in the Big Ten tournament. Their hope is to get their fifth year senior Davis back by the NCAA tournament. Molly Davis is playing so well, especially in conference play this season. Allowed everybody to just properly be in their spots, and Davis and Clark were two point guards on the floor. Clark with the rebound. Eyes up, straight ahead to Stelke. Beautiful defense by Kylie Lavelle, but then there's Kylie Fewer back to immediately take it back. Gabby Marshall! They might as well call her Gabby March. She is unbelievable this time of year. It was in this tournament last season where Gabby Marshall, it felt like she hit 53s over the course of three games. She is money. She's hit more than 200 in her career. Even though statistically struggled to shoot the ball earlier this year, she finds that stroke. It's like riding a bike. Clark with the defense, and Iowa is pouring it on. Fewer box. Hey, I got it. I love that name for Gabby Marshall for sure. I mean, she's been four for seven from deep against Ohio State and Minnesota. Two wins for the Buck or for Iowa. It's when the other te teammates step up and knock down more than what they normally average. Three minutes, 49 seconds left in the first quarter. And that's the first point of the game so far for Caitlin Clark. 
You look at what she's done historically here at this tournament. She is shocking, amazing. <laughs> Averaging more than 20 points a game her freshman year, her sophomore year, her junior year. So this is a Penn State team, Megan, in desperation mode, needing a signature win for the selection committee, and they've struggled offensively. Do they go straight to Ashley Arusu to offense? I feel like my question was just answered. I feel like that was a really good strategy. You just, like, call that. Very nicely done. But in all seriousness, Penn State needs to find ways to get to the basket and get fouled. Instead, it's O'Grady who gets to the basket and gets fouled. You know, we were there for the beginning of the season at the crossover at Kinnick when Iowa played in front of 55,000 people at the football stadium. It was an exhibition game. And we talked to Lisa Bluter about how the team's different now versus then. And one of the things she said was how they attack the post because at the beginning of the season, they thought Addie O'Grady or Sharon Goodman would be getting tons of time. And they did cycle through that. But then it's shifted away and it's become a lot more about Hannah Stolke, right? Well, a much smaller lineup for Iowa when you have Hannah Stolke at year five, but she's been able to be effective in that position because of her athleticism. She can guard anybody. Grace Hall with a step through. Nice job by Penn State attacking Iowa zone, finding the gap. A three-pointer offline. A falter gets fouled by... It was very difficult to defend in the Big Ten is Caitlin Clark because her eyes look other places and the ball goes the opposite direction. So you can't always predict what she's going to do. Clark getting a breather on the bench right now. Iowa's up by 12. Iowa's sitting here in this extended zone. Penn State has to find ways to hit the gap, especially at the high post or on that weak side. And try to get some easy twos. There's Ashley Arusu creating offense, something she can do her whole career. Now she's in trouble, and Arusu fouls. On average, they end the first quarter leading by six points. They're doing right there, telling us, man. Iowa has shot 11 free throws and made nine. While Penn State has yet to shoot one. They need to get to the rim as often as they can, especially when you're down, you can't get things going offensively. It's good to see the ball going at the line. They just be well short on that three. Penn State started off missing their first six shots, then they made six of the last seven. Clark gets fouled on the three. She's been the number one scorer in the country three times in her four-year career, and the one time she wasn't, she was the number two scorer. <laughs> Crazy thing about that is the same stat is true with assists. She led the country in assists three times, and the one time she didn't, she was number two. Some of her passes are the best I've ever seen at any level, men's or women's basketball. Yeah, that's what Lisa Bluter will tell you she loves most. The best thing about Clark, according to Bluter, is her vision. She told me some of the times in practice, the passes that Clark makes take Lisa's breath away. Six of the team's 13 points have come from Ashley Owusu, who's short on the jumper. Chesky keeps it alive. Now Gabby Marshall has it with a three-second difference between the game and shot. Happiness on Clark. The way it began with a Kate Martin basket. We can confirm, as people being here, that uh, when Iowa makes a bucket, <laughs> it feels like the roof's going to come off. Well, they are known for their offense. Top scoring team in the country, 31 points here in that first quarter. But their defense has been so impressive as well, holding a good scoring Penn State team to only 13 points. In 10 minutes, Clark from deep, yet to hit a field goal in this game. Here's Chesky running ahead of the bunch. Oh, they can't even hit the open layup. Brutal start for the Lady Lions. You have to make those. Iowa hasn't been able to give you any easy buckets. You have to take care of them when you get them. Tighten up, woman up. Play with pace. That quarter was on your own agenda. Let's get back to our game plan. Well, perhaps some momentum here, a turnover. Happiness bowls into Marshall, and that's going to be a foul on Marshall. 
Big 10 Plus to stream for as low as $9.95 a month at Big10Plus.com. Happiness hits them both. Brigham commits that foul. That's her second, so off to the bench for her. Stelke. Grace Hall corrals the ball. You can say it. You like that accidental run. It rhymed, yeah. I liked it. So why is this so hard for Penn State to get inside? Iowa's guards are much longer than people realize, and they're moving well without the ball. On the pass, you have Iowa jerseys moving towards the rim. So that right there is open right now as McKenna Maurice and Knox. Clark. Still can't hit. 0 for 5 from the floor. They've done a good job contesting her. Oh, what a great pass. Beautiful by Owusu, and the Lady Lions have got a little bit of rhythm you see here. the first points of the second quarter for the Hawkeyes. Into on Clark. A long two, and that's her first bucket. Up to Brigham, puts the ball down and gets in trouble. Somehow curls it around and in. Allie Brigham remembered she was 6'4 and taller than everybody around her and was able to have that crafty finish. Clark from deep. Yet to hit. 0 for 6 from behind the three point line. Owusu creates the offense and has a chance at a three-point play. Penn State is at their best when they're able to get defensive stops and turn that into transition. Oh, they've been able to keep Iowa at bay. There really haven't been many second-chance opportunities for the Hawkeyes. And then actually Owusu was taking the ball and creating for everybody who's sprinting down the floor. Lisa Bluter said, hey, we are settling for the three right now. We'll get those later on. Let's get to the free throw line. Let's drive, cut, screen, and move. And every time there's a double, we're not diving for our post. That was their five minutes. Let's get ours. Sure enough, Feuerbach opens up with a three-pointer, but Walter gets it back for an easy two. Sydney of Walter has been the offense for Iowa, while the greatest scorer in the history of college basketball has made zero threes and only one field goal. It's Sydney of Falter in double digits. Sydney of Walter made a case for Big Ten Sixth Woman of the Year. And she's certainly living up to that right now. She also sets great screens, dives on the floor for loose balls, all the little things that you need to do to win games that don't necessarily show up in the stat sheet. Clark splitting defenders, drawing the foul. One area where Penn State had success was Caitlin Clark had 12 turnovers the last time these two teams met. She played a little too fast at times. You know, if she hits another three-pointer, she will break another all-time college basketball record. It's one that right now is shared with her and a guy named Steph Curry. Are there any records left after that one to break? <laughs> Finds a new one every week, it feels like. About three minutes left in the second. Jay Chesky cannot hit. Another miss by the Lady Lions, and Clark has it. Allie Campbell cannot hesitate. She's a 40% three-point shooter. She's got to shoot a wide open three. Marshall. Gabby Marshall was 61% from the three-point line last year in the final nine games entering the NCAA tournament. And she has caught fire in the month of March again for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Three-point shot is not Leilani Kaplan. It's a shot all the time. She's got to work to shoot that a little later in the shot clock. Try to get some ball reversals. Clark on the drive. And we talked with Lisa Bluter about that and the fact that she's starting to heat up once again. And Lisa just says it makes her feel so good because she's so important to this team for morale reasons. She gives 100% effort. She's their best defender on the team. And for her to finally get rewarded by the ball going through the hoop, it's just great for the whole team morale. Gabby Marshall, you just nailed it, by the way. I like that nickname. We're going to run with it. Coming up at a half, we'll send it across the court. Justine, Autumn, and Shimmy have our State Farm halftime report. Hanna Marisa. Lady Lions are 1 of 12 from behind the line. Kylie Fewer back. Oh, Wusu. 
11 points on the day for the leading scorer for Penn State. But Stokey quickly up ahead. Can't finish. She'll be shooting two. And it gives Kylie Fierbach an open lane to get all the way to the rim. Are you talking about the speed that Stelke has when we asked Bluter about her amazing 47-point performance against Penn State earlier this year? The first thing she brought up was her speed. Owusu, a long two, and Clark with the rebound. When Iowa scores, they can get back and set up defensively, and Penn State was having success when they can score in transition. Clark dribbling behind her back. Can't get the shot to go, and I'll take that. <laughs> that was a good catch. Let's see. This is what a pro does. Boom, baby. <laughs> Someone sent help. Now, we're the cameras at all times. And we talked about the first game. Penn State shot 43 pointers against Iowa. They made 13. Well, they've shot 13 three pointers here, and have only made one. Six seconds, seven second difference between the shot and game. Clark double team behind the back pass to Stokey. Kept alive by the Hawkeyes. McCabe at the buzzer. Ooh, almost another highlight moment for the Hawkeyes. They're still on track for their normal amount of points, 46 at half. And why? Because of the free throw line. They have 19 points from the free throw line. They've been able to get to the basket at ease. Even though they love to shoot threes, it starts by establishing that inside-outside game. Ronnie Kapanis with a three to start things off for Penn State. Paint touches lead to open three-point opportunities. Maurice is able to draw multiple white jerseys, and that leads to an open opportunity for Kapanis. Clark dishes to an open Gabby Marshall. You knew it was going in. Everyone in this building knew it was going in. Overhelping on Caitlin Clark has been the downfall of Penn State's defense at times because everybody else is so wide open. Brigham and Penn State. Marisa guarding Clark. And fouling Clark. And Clark, <laughs> just for fun, flips it up and it goes in. She's Won't always, count. She's always trying to get the continuation, which I, you know, I respect. But watch this. One, two. Blue jerseys get drawn into Clark. The overhelp happens, and Gabby Marshall wide open once again. Marshall electric from the floor, and just like that, more points for the Hawkeyes, although Caitlin Clark looks a little banged up there. When she does not have the ball in her hands, they're hard denying. When she does have the ball in their ha her hands, Leilani Kapanis is using her quickness to stay in front of Clark. Clark now with nine points from the free throw line alone today. He's up, out to Shea Chesky. She hits her first three of the day. This is a different Penn State team. Back-to-back -back threes happen because of the paint touches that draws the defense in and gives shooters time to get the shot off. Kate Martin inside with an answer, and now we're starting to see that rhythm. 104, pardon me, 204 points scored between these two teams when they met a month ago. Marisa flips it to Kaplan. It's beautiful execution by Penn State. A lob pass is so difficult to execute. Look at how packed the paint is right now for Penn State. Everybody's inside the three-point line. Ooh, a falter somehow turns around and flips the shot up around Kapanis. It doesn't go. Lady Lions are running. Chesky to Marisa. She'll fire. Book it. Beautiful skip pass by Shea Chesky. Up ahead to an all-alone Marshall. Her first miss from deep after three straight makes. Wide open, Kate Martin. Here's Chesky on the run. Stop and pop at the free throw line. Back to when I was playing in 2010 to 2014. Talk about all the great Melissa Dixons and the Sam Logics, Bethany Doolittles. This program's been elite for a long time. Hawkeyes struggling to score right now. McCabe ends that with a deep shot. That's what Taylor McCabe does. She comes in and knocks down threes. A true three-point shooting specialist. And her team's always looking to get her in those opportunities behind the arc. Cade shoots 48% from the three-point line. And two with a difficult shot, and that's a foul on Lavelle. She needs four more to get to a double-double and then two more rebounds. We're in triple-double territory, flirting with it right now.
Getting close. Stalky. Swinging around to Feuerbach. That's another open look for McCabe. Two in a row. Oh, man. They don't want Iowa to get to the rim, but they're giving up wide open threes as a result. Happiness. Thought about a three. Owusu will take the three-pointer. McCabe, her first miss. Owusu flips it into the corner to Kapanis. Be a threat herself from deep. Instead, she drives and draws a foul on Stelton. And those drives can happen if Iowa reverses the ball better because Penn State right now is overhelping. They're getting a little out of whack. So if you can reverse the ball quickly, you're going to be wide open on the weak side driving to the rim. Chesky hits two free throws. Martin will inbound. Clark taking a breather. A falter all alone at the top of the key. They're the best in the country at making threes. They average 11 a game. So many different Hawkeyes are a threat to shoot it. Martin on the drive. But now they've hit three, so the drive's open because Penn State has to come out and a contested three points. Wusu creates offense out of nothing for Penn State at a time when they needed it. Eight seconds in the quarter. Three to shoot for Kate Martin. This was a slight improvement for the Lady Lions in the third quarter. We have watched Caitlin Clark play a lot of basketball games over the course of her career. This is one of the best defensive efforts I have ever seen regarding Liberty and her ability to get open at three. Caitlin Clark short on her ninth attempt. A whistle for over the back as a falter goes down on the ground. Walter's been all over the floor. They're spreading the ball at a high level. 15 assists as a team. Viewers watching games on TV. Basically every network that carries Caitlin Clark games has set an all-time record this season. She finds Marshall for another three attempt. Ball batted out. Clark, another miss from deep. And Martin saves it. Martin in the lane. We don't give Kate Martin enough love for what she does for Iowa. Her ability to get downhill, finish, under control, and also defensively, she does so many little things. She's just the enforcer everywhere she goes on the floor. Martin closing in on a double-double. The glue of the team, the mother hen as they've called her. Caitlin Clark hits the three-pointer, and Clark makes history once again. No one in the history of the sport has hit more threes in a season than Clark has this year. Eleven straight missed three-pointers for her, and the one that goes down breaks an all-time record. She's good, man. But as a shooter, you got to be like Dorian finding Nemo. Just keep swimming. She normally makes 5.4 three-pointers per game. You're competing to live another day playing. But you got to have a little fun with it. Even when you're not having your best game from the field statistically, you got to remember your why. And Caitlin Clark showing her why. Right Don't there. you think that's what separates her? The reason that she sticks out and be, has become a social phenomenon is her flair. Lenani Kapanis is not guarding her right now because she's not in the game. 
Harkness got hit in the face and it all headed off to the locker room with the trainer. And Clark with a block on Odin. Marshall, the lane is open. She'll take it. Happiness was back in the game after leaving for a while once getting hit in the face. Chesky tried to pass to Marisa. It got batted around and the Hawkeyes have it. Look at Clark creating offense. Still is able to explode towards the rim. Finishes through contact. She's balanced. Shoulder square to the basket. She's been in the weight room off lately, it looks like. Soon to be the most obvious number one draft pick in the history of American professional sports. If you're going to go to Vegas, it's a good bet to take, I would say. <laughs> I don't know, maybe the fever will be like, wow, she started this one game 0 for 11 from I deep. Know, she, I don't know. She, Let's reconsider. Missed her first 11 threes. <laughs> Owusu, she technically has 17 in her career. And I say technically because 18 is what I like to count. Because that one happened on a football field this past October in the exhibition match, the crossover at Kinnick. A falter with a career-high scoring performance. Give me a falter. Have yourself a day. She has been excellent on both ends of the floor. But most importantly, she's letting the game come to her. There's Kapanis. Quick two. Falter always has one team, and Clark always has another. And it's just a fun shooting drill, right? But Clark trash talks a falter the entire time. Just, I got you, Sydney. I'm beating you. You can't beat me. As Gabby Marshall hits her fourth three-pointer of the day. There's just so much love back and forth between Clark and her teammates. There's a lot of great chemistry with his Iowa team. So many back as Marisa gets the bucket to go from that final four run, the national title run. And when you have that shared experience, it takes you a long way. You trust each other. You know how to communicate non-verbally and on the floor with each other. That was a huge thing for everybody to go through together getting to the national championship game last year. Falter on the drive. She'll head to the line. To the new last name. She's got four three-pointers now in three consecutive games. Now, when you spell Marshall, is there going to be two L's at the end or just one? I think dash two L at the end of March. Oh. March dash L. I like the dash idea. Trademark. Copyright. I'll call the lawyers. She's getting a breather as well. Clark's back in the game. This is a Penn State team, but according to Autumn Johnson, came into the game the last team out. It's a Penn State team that dealt with a horrible injury to Tay Valaday yep. about a month ago, who was their heart and soul. Clark, another miss from deep. Falter keeps it alive. Clark again. I remember remember the first time I ever talked to Caitlin Clark was before a Northwestern game her freshman year, and we talked to her on Zoom, Lisa Byington and I, and I was shocked and blown away by how poised and mature she was for a freshman. She could adequately explain how to pass the ball at a high level, how to get her teammates involved. The game is in good hands moving forward with the youth across the nation in women's hoops. And if you've not had a chance to watch much college basketball, especially Big Ten basketball, and you're watching tonight for Caitlin Clark, stick around this postseason for Cody McMahon oh. at Ohio State, who's got a couple more years left. You've got multiple talented players at Indiana who are going to be fun to watch. I mean, you can go Michigan's on got on. two five-star recruits coming in next season. We're going on and on right now. Damn Someone much. stop us. <laughs> Caitlin Clark's got a double-double. Ten rebounds, 24 points, seven assists. She was much better. Only six turnovers today compared to the 12 she had the first time these two met. He cuts it down in half. It's an improvement. We're going in the right direction. You brought up a moment ago the Tay Valaday injury for Penn State. The other thing for the selection committee to, to keep in mind, of course, is another three goes. That's now 15 made threes. Fans are thrilled to keep singing that chant. This was a team effort tonight. Five different players in double figures for Iowa. Hannah Stolke wasn't even one of them. She was double teamed the moment she stepped off the bus, essentially, in this game by Penn State. 
Sydney and Fulcher coming to life. Those are the types of performances that give players like her so much confidence in March and moving forward. A reason to be terrified of Iowa this postseason, their defense. Now this weekend, don't miss the 2024 Big Ten Wrestling Championship on Big Ten Plus. Now that's a value to both fan bases. Great wrestling schools at Penn State and Iowa. Penn State Lady Lions scored 93 points when these two teams met up earlier this year. There was never really any dribble penetration consistently. Penn State struggled to get the ball in the paint, and Iowa was able to rebound out of it. Won the rebounding margin plus 12 in this game. Iowa Hawkeyes have their 22nd 90-point game of the season. They hold Penn State.